Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Meredith Pittman and I am a liver GI pathologist and I'm one of the directors of the liver GI modules for the virtual path elective along with Drs. Arnold and Peju. And this is very special for us to be able to work together. We actually all did the Johns Hopkins liver GI pathology fellowship, but in different years. And we have connected to each other through that fellowship and developed a uh, friendship that extends outside of our pathology world. And so we're really excited to be working together on this, even though we're at three different institutions. So I just wanna take a brief moment um, to tell you how I got into pathology and why I chose liver GI pathology specifically. So uh, when I went to medical school, um, I didn't know what pathology was. <laughs> I grew up in South Carolina and I went to a small liberal arts school for college and I was a music major and decided to go to medical school because I knew I didn't wanna teach violin for the rest of my life, even though I loved to play. And I pretty much figured I'd be an internal medicine doctor because that's the kind of medicine that I was familiar with through the doctors that I you know, had growing up. No one in my family was in medicine. And it was my second year of medical school where we had a course a year-long course of pathology that ran along with the other pathophysiology courses and it really piqued my interest so I did an elective in my third year of medical school at Washington University in St. Louis that's where I was and did a surge path elective and that month really opened my eyes to what pathology could be and how pathologists at a large academic center practiced and I did other electives after that because it was very difficult for me letting go of the idea of seeing patients. I love patients. I love people. Um, I'm an extroverted introvert <laughs> for people who, who care about that sort of thing. And I really enjoyed knowing people and knowing their stories and trying to help them feel better and trying to diagnose them and provide a listening ear. And so the idea that I wouldn't be doing that anymore was difficult for me. But what I ultimately came to decide is that as a pathologist, I was still a physician and I was still going to be providing excellent care. It's just my patients weren't going to know that I was providing that excellent care. And I had to be okay with that. And I had to be okay with me saying, okay, I'm going to see 40 patients today and none of them are going to know who I am and that I care about each and every one of them. And am I okay with that? And I decided that I was, although it's not for everyone. Um, the other thing that I really loved about pathology is that it's really, well, it, first of all, it's really broad. It's as broad as internal medicine and what you can do and what you can be and how you can practice at an academic center and being very research oriented or very clinically oriented or in a private practice hospital where you're doing lots of different things in the lab and also at your microscope and going to clinical conferences, um, but not really being so much in that research portion of it. Uh, so it's very, very, very broad. I liked that because it gave me a lot of options. Um, I also liked that it was very independent. Um, one thing that was a little frustrating to me when I was rotating through my clinical medicine rotations, and this is for me personally, I, I wanted to be able to do everything for my patient. You know, I, I wished that I could know the medicine and give the medicine and, and know what was wrong and diagnose it and, and like have everything done for my patient right then by me. And that's just not really the way medicine works because we need all of these other people uh, along with us as physicians to make sure that patients get the best care. We need the nurses who are really good at dispensing medication and know all those rules. And we need the phlebotomists who are really good at drawing blood. And we, you know, so you just, you need all those ancillary staff people. Um, and I just, I found that to be different from what I had expected. Um, and in pathology, it could just be me. Now, granted, I work with my pathology assistants and I work with the ancillary staff in the front office, but a large part of what I do during the day can just be me in my office. And that makes my schedule a little more flexible. And that means that I get to decide the diagnosis that goes on the paper um, because that's what I'm trained to do. I'm trained to diagnose. And I liked that independence. Along with that independence, though, comes a lot of responsibility to 
know what you don't know and have colleagues with whom you can share cases at your institution or elsewhere. So Dr. Arnold and Dr. Peju and I actually share images and, and talk about cases, even though we aren't at the same institutions. Um, and then it also means that you have to be very self-motivated to learn and to stay on top of things because there's not always going to be someone breathing down your neck saying, hey, you have to read this or you have to know this. You just have to decide that as a pathologist, in order to stay at the top of your field, you have to read this and you have to know this for your patients, for patient care. And so you have to be a very self-motivated learner. And um, so I think pathology fit really well for me and what I was looking for. In, in a medical career, I found it to be very satisfying. I chose liver GI pathology. I, I joke about it, but really on a whim, I knew I needed to choose a specialty because I knew I wanted to stay in academic medicine and teach. And um, my program director told me I had to pick something so that I could apply for fellowship. And I liked it all. I loved surgical pathology, and I picked the biggest, broadest specialty I could, liver GI, in part because there were so many organs, but also in part is that wasn't all cancer all the time. So I know some people love studying breast cancer and diagnosing breast cancer and interacting with um, breast oncologists and surgeons, and that's great. For me, I didn't want to be dealing with cancer all the time. And as a liver GI pathologist, I deal with a lot of medical liver. I deal with a lot of inflammatory bowel disease. I deal with esophagitis. I also deal with colorectal carcinoma and gastric carcinoma and hepatocellular carcinoma. So there are all these different avenues that you can take once you even enter a subspecialty within pathology. And that's another really excellent part about our field. Um, one of the things that Drs. Arnold and Peju especially wanted to make sure that I touched on was the fact that even though I am independent and I do get to work in my office looking at my slides, um, I have a lot of interaction with my clinical colleagues. So this idea that pathologists are just alone in their office all day long really isn't true. So let me tell you about a typical Thursday. So a typical Thursday starts for me with an 8.30 a.m. conference with our hepatologists, where we go over the liver biopsies from the previous week. And some of these are patients who are post-transplant, and some of these are patients who have had cancer resections. But a lot of these patients are just patients who have elevated liver enzymes and had a biopsy, and we need to discuss them in a multidisciplinary conference. And I love that conference. I love working with my hepatologists and my liver transplant surgeons and my liver transplant physician's assistants. Um, then if I'm on clinical service, I generally sign out with my resident and that can take a couple hours where we go through all the cases together and look at the slides and talk about the diagnosis and the patient and what's important to that patient and how we word the diagnosis and why. And then I usually eat lunch at my desk where I answer emails, uh, take a break from the microscope because your eyes can get very tired if you're just sitting with your eyes open the whole day long. Um, and then we have a consensus conference where we talk about difficult cases or interesting cases, and that's in part a teaching conference. And then the rest of the afternoon, I actually release those cases that I looked at with my my resident earlier that day. So I actually have to you know log into the electronic medical system and look at those reports and make sure they're okay and send them out into the electronic medical record for the clinicians to see. Uh, sometimes there's other things that need to be done. I need to go to the gross room and look at a specimen with the fellow or the resident or the PA, or I need to send some emails about a research project, or I need to meet with a resident about a research project. Um, so the afternoon passes fairly quickly, and then at the end of the day on Thursday, I go to another clinical conference, which was our colorectal tumor board, where I sit with colorectal surgeons, oncologists, radiologists, and radiation oncologists, and we all discuss cases that where there's a clinical question, a treatment question of some sort, and we present the pathology of uh, patients who have already had surgery, but then we're also there to discuss patients who may have upcoming surgery, uh, what the surgeons are gonna do, if there's anything for us to think about. Sometimes there'll be a weird appendix tumor coming, and we'll talk about that. Um, and it's a really great conference to, to hear how what we diagnose impacts patient care. Um, and I'm very lucky to work with some excellent clinicians, and I really value those collaborations that I have, those times that I get to go and, and be a physician and help take care of my patients. So 
I think that pathology is a great field. I think there's a lot of different avenues for people who either want to be research oriented or clinical medicine oriented um, because the field is just wide open. I love liver GI specifically, um, but really take your time. Uh, you'll find the specialty that fits for you if you're a medical student. As you rotate through, you'll find the people who are similar to you and think similar to you and learn similar to you. And I, I really think that matters a lot because um, then you are working with those people very closely. And uh, I wish you the best of luck. Good luck with these uh, GI modules. We hope that they are informative and educational and easy to use. We've tried to break them down by organ uh, to the best of our ability and we'll constantly be updating and adding new material. So check back with us um, in the future to see if there are new things available. All right, thank you so much and good luck.